Hello, I'm James, this is the headquarters and welcome to today's HQ Tutorials. We're talking about remote desktop editing. So you've got your own edit suite and you want to access the footage remotely. How do you go about doing it? Well, this is my setup. I've got a Windows Server 2012. Yes, I know it's old, but it's got everything built in that you need to do. So once you do these setup, I'm not going to go through the setup now because that's a whole video on its own. Uh, it will show you on the website all the machines and you can just double click them and it loads up. All you have to do is forward the ports on your router, not this one because this was dead, and um, essentially it does it all for you. Uh, I'll go through a few different ways of how you can do it if you don't have a Windows Server 2012 or 2016 or 2019, um, but uh, if you do, let's crack on. Okay, so I'm back home now in front of my PC and I need to log in, so let's go to Internet Explorer and we'll go to the website. I'm going to log in to the server. And here you see the list of available computers. Now, I don't know why it says Avid 1 twice. There is only one machine in there, so we'll just pick the top one, click Connect. It's going to bring this dialog box up at the bottom. And this only works on a PC. For some reason, this won't work on a Mac, like with Safari or Firefox. You have to do this on a PC. So we're going to save this to the desktop. Save it as Avid 1. And there it appears on there. So we can close our Internet Explorer box. So now we've got our RDP connection, we'll open that. Boom, and there we have the desktop at the office. So how do we get sound? Okay, let's try loading Avid, see what happens. Okay, here we go, Avid's loading up, exactly as if we were sitting in front of the PC. Okay, so let's load up this test project. So this is a comedy like that I help run every week, so that's why I've got some footage of me standing on stage trying to tell some jokes. So, sequence is all set up, all the audio is there, it's normal. Because I've got a Blackmagic device in my actual PC at work, what you need to do is make sure you disable the hardware, otherwise it will try and play the sound through the speakers in the office, and that's obviously not what you want when you're not here. So, okay. Hardware turned off. Let's see if it plays. Are you having a good time? What was your name? Lily. Oh, you were the normal one. That was right. Um. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got some sound. We've got some pictures, and it's playing pretty smoothly. I can scrub up and down, zoom in and out the timeline. I mean, I could pretty much do exactly the same as as if I was at the office. Um, you know, edit away. Do what you like. It's great. Look at that. Exporting, blah, 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 all done. So let's try it Premiere. As you can see, I'm still on the 2018 version. I've not taken the plunge and upgraded to 2019, but this principle is going to be the same for whatever version you're using. Let's load up another project. Okay, so it's me again at another geek. So in Premiere, because again, I've got the Blackmagic card, we need to change the output settings. So go to Edit, Preferences, Audio Hardware. And by default, for me, it's got remote audio. So if it doesn't say that, you just go and change into one of these settings. And normally it'd be on Blackmagic. So I go to MME, I don't know what that stands for. Remote audio, out remote audio. And then you also need to go down to playback. Because I've got a Blackmagic card, this might say Blackmagic. Make sure you've got it on Adobe Desktop Audio. Okay, that, and if by magic. <laughs> thought I was homeless. I said no, and he gave me free chips! Yeah. So there we go, it's working as per normal. Again, you can zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you like, do all your editing, it all depends on how fast your connection speed is. If you want to make the window a little bit smaller, and then you'll get better scrubbing, then that's fine. Essentially, you can use it exactly the same way as you do as if you are actually in the building. Just a quick note to say that the audio sounds a little bit tinny on the playback because of the way that Camtasia is recording the system audio. It actually sounds completely normal. Okay, so as you saw, I have a dual screen set up at work and I've also got a dual screen set up at home. What if I want to use both monitors? Well, you can. If you go to your uh, remote desktop connection on the desktop and go to Edit, and under Display, if you select Use All My Monitors for the Remote Session, go to General and then Save. When you click connect, as if by magic, it uses both windows. 
apps. <laughs> what other advantages does this have? Well, you can do it on your phone. As long as you load up the Microsoft Remote Desktop software on your uh, iPhone or your Android phone, you can actually load up that uh, file that we saw in the video earlier, open it up, and you can access it using the screen. It's not the best thing in the world because you can only do basic stuff with it because you have to use your thumb as the cursor and then manually type stuff. But if, say, you've got a video that you need to change a title on or you just need to re-render something, you can do it fairly quickly on your mobile phone. Say you're sitting in a coffee shop like this, then you can uh, log in with your laptop and do it. It's brilliant. It's nice and easy to connect to PCs using this method, but how do you connect to Macs? Now Macs can't be joined to Windows Server the same way they can as PCs, so we have to go a slightly different route. We have to use VNC Viewer, so this means that you have to log into your server or one of the other PCs and then load up VNC Viewer to then log into the Mac, so you're kind of doing a double remote desktop. So let's see how this works. So if you load up VNC Viewer, I'm going to add a new connection, type in the IP address. Okay, that's and we'll connect, put our password in. This is the password you set up in the Mac, which we'll come to in a bit. If we go full screen, and there is the login prompt on the Mac. So let's just log in. There we have the Mac desktop. Now, this works slightly differently because we're not doing a session on the Mac. We're actually controlling the screen. So anyone in the office or wherever will be able to see your mouse moving around. will be able to see you doing all this sort of stuff. As you can see, there was a, quite a bit of lag on uh, using this system. I, I don't know why this is all hardwired, so it's all gigabit ethernet. So if you want to do it this way, this is how you set it up. So on the Mac, we'll go to System Preferences, Sharing, and then Enable Remote Management. So turn this one on, go to Computer Settings, add a VNC password, and then note down the IP address of your Mac. That is what you type into the VNC viewer on your server. And then you can use your Mac as if you're in front of it. Now it is very laggy. Um, I don't know why. So I would only use this method if you sort of needed to close a project down or do an export or something. You certainly can't use it for doing any editing. It's just too slow. So how do you get this set up if you don't have a server? Well, it's fairly straightforward. All you need to do is find out the IP address of your machine you're trying to get to, load up the software on your router and forward the relevant ports uh, towards it. I'll try and put them in the description downstairs. And then all you need to do is find out your external IP address. Now the thing with external IP addresses is if you're on a home network, they'll probably change. Here in the office, we've got a static IP, so they're always the same. So you'll have to use a uh, there's lots of different websites that show uh, how you can load a little bit of software on your machine. It'll update another website with your external IP address. Websites like these will help you do this. Um, you might have to pay for it, I don't know. Again, Windows Server 2012 handles this all for you. So that's how you do remote desktop editing. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try my best to uh, answer them all. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and you can get some more HQ tutorials. That's it for now.